Welcome to Shutter Jam, the place where film cameras rise from the ashes of this world. My name is Dirk, and today we're going to be looking at the Nikon F3. The Nikon F3 is a camera unlike any other, a stunning looking and incredibly beautiful 35mm SLR that is really hard to beat. Manufactured probably in Sendai, in the land of the rising sun, somewhere between 1980 and 2000 on a rather humid day. In terms of looks, it really is a thing of beauty. And this is very much down to the elegant design by Giorgetto Gigaro, and probably more so to all the talented people at Nikon that often get overlooked. Now, the red line that features on all Nikon cameras made its first appearance here. Now, Gagaro also designed automobiles, so was the red line a throwback to the era of go faster cars? Well, who cares? Personally, I'd paint a red line down my fridge, and you know what? It would probably be colder as a result. Now, I would compare this thing to a Porsche, and I'm really glad it turned out that way, because it could have been a lot worse. Gagaro also designed the Fiat Panda, so between you and me, he must have had a little bit of help. So here's to all the talented people at Nikon, I salute you. Now these things aren't particularly cheap, but they are still fairly affordable. I picked one up on eBay for about $200 with some really good glass, which included a fantastic f1.2 50mm lens. Wow! Granted, it did have a small family of fungus growing in there, which required a little bit of delicate disassembly and cleaning. Remember that back in 1981, this thing probably cost about $1,200, which in today's money is about $3,000. So put it this way, you're getting a really good bargain for a camera that the professionals use. Now I'm really excited, but before we shoot, we need to show a little bit of restraint because this will pay off dividends later. These aren't my words, but the words of the Nikon F3 manual. Congratulations, you are now the owner of one of the most advanced and easy to use camera on the market today. Blah, 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 blah. A few minutes wisely invested now will pay off in years of rewarding photographic experience. Right. Well, I better read the manual then. Or maybe not. Loading the film is really simple. Simply pop up the rewind mechanism just like every other camera made for the last 20 years and it will magically open. Hey? Hey? No, no, it, do no, it doesn't. Okay, okay, there's a tiny little mechanism that needs to be pushed to the right. Which actually makes perfect sense, because as a professional, the last thing you'd want is the door opening and ruining your entire day's work. Place the film in, latch it on, and we're ready to shoot. Yay! Simply wind on the film, and... Ho ho ho! camera has the Nikon F mount which features on all Nikon cameras for about half a century and the fantastic thing about this is there are so many choices of lens available at a whole lot of different price points from the cheap to the ridiculously expensive even modern lenses will work on this thing provided they have an aperture ring what I have attached to this camera is the incredible Nikon 1.250mm which gives an incredibly tight depth of field. The lens and camera are a match made in heaven. Could it actually get any better? It does! Everything on the camera has the perfect tactile response. It's simply beyond words. The shutter advance fever winds on film like a hot knife through butter. It's simply that good. It's the perfect shape for the thumb. It's like it's been specifically molded for me. It's perception personified. The speed dial is beautiful and large and easily turnable, which makes it ideal for those with small hands and also for those who have slightly chunkier digit. It locks into aperture priority mode, which means you're not gonna knock it out of position if you're a clumsy oaf. It goes from eight seconds to two thousandths of a second. The other letters on the dial are 
B for bold mode, where the shutter remains open for as long as you hold down the shutter release. T for time mode, where the shutter will remain open until you change modes. And finally, X, which I assume stands for electronic flash, which is the electronic flash mode. The camera features an exposure adjust to allow up to two stops in either direction in a third increments, perfect for fine tuning the output. This is done near the mechanism over here. You need to engage it with a tiny button, which may be a little bit difficult with those with chunky digits. It's the only piece of the camera that feels a little bit fragile and a bit awkward. Now releasing the shutter is done via the button on top of the film of the advance. It's not particularly quiet. The shutter is electronic via a quartz crystal, so it's fairly accurate. You can manually release the shutter, but this will be roughly at um, a 60th of a second, which may just save your bacon. Looking through the viewfinder is a beautiful experience, large and clear. This is the HP version of the camera, which stands for high viewpoint. This provides an extra large viewfinder and also makes it suitable for those with glasses. The viewfinder and the ground glass is both interchangeable and removable. There are various variations that were available at the time. This again shows you a professional pedigree, as I can imagine you'd select the best one depending on your profession. If you find it, you can see the aperture that has been selected on the lens as well as the shutter speed. This brings me on to metering, which is also done on the LCD screen. The only problem with this LCD screen is that it has a limited shelf life and will begin to fade over time. I can't see the numbers on mine when I shoot indoors, but outside I have no problems whatsoever. This wouldn't be so much of an issue as a backlight is provided via an incredibly small little red button. Mine no longer works, which is a real shame because with a 1.2 lens, I'd honestly want to use it in a low light situations. Talking of metering, you can lock the exposure speed by holding down this button when composing. The meter is 80% center weighted in the middle of the frame, 20% for the rest of the frame. The feature on this camera depth of field preview, which is here. And if I hold and twist this switch, then I can lock the mirror. You want double exposures? Then this does it too. Simply move this dial here and it will stop the film advancing when you wind on. As you can see, all these features make a quite impressive package, which makes shooting this thing an absolute joy. The people that designed the Sony A7 could really get some design hints. So let's take a look at the results. Apologies for the shocking scan qualities. These were scanned by a Muppet. It takes professional images and the only constraint with the camera is yourself. People often ban around superlatives such as best manual camera ever made. Well, it certainly has to be amongst one of the best, and that's for sure. The point is there's a lot of fantastic SLRs in the world, and in the words of Obi-Wan, only a Sith deals in absolutes. Now, I don't like to rant because I like to maintain a certain level of professionalism, but it confirms to me that the world has gone mad. The problem with SLRs today is they're too bulky, too boring. It's all got a little bit silly, really. If they could make a relatively compact SLR in 1980, then why can't they do that today? Oh, if you want a small camera, get yourself a mirrorless, you say. Well, I don't want a mirrorless camera. I want a small digital SLR with an F mount. So please, Nikon, answer my call. If we've got better administration, then why doesn't this concept apply to DSLRs? If we carry on this theme, surely in 10 years time, they'll be too large to carry by themselves. However, that's why you might want to shoot film. If you want to spend your entire life trying to find the best manual focus 35mm SLR camera available, then don't buy this one. 
as your quest will be over before it even began. If you're looking for a piece of art and a clear statement in design, then this certainly would look lovely on a shelf. But it's too good for a shelf. It needs to be framed and hung on a wall. If you're looking for one of the best manual focus SLRs ever made, with all the features you could ever want, that'll put a smile on your face, capture beautiful stunning images without all the hassle, then this would be my camera of choice. Thank you for watching Shadow Jam. If you liked and enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments, then please leave those below. I look forward to seeing you next time on Shutter Jam.